Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin. Today, I'm sitting down. Usually when I do my Play Your Be Alright videos, I'm standing up. But today I thought I would play the game while sitting down. See if that helps any with my chances. And plus, it is the TBR for the month of November, which is a very, very special month for me. So I get to make the rules. I get to do whatever the hell I want. So yes, this is my November TBR video. And if you do not know, I play Play Your TBR Right, which is a TBR game that I created, inspired by Cody from Cody's Book Corner and Becca from Becca and the Books, as well as the British game show Play Your Cards Right. If you want to know more about the game and the rules and everything, I will have a playlist in the description box with all of the previous games in, as well as as kind of like a rundown of the rules in the description box. So if this is your first Play Your All Right video, then do check out the description box to see what this whole thing is about. I'm extremely excited about today's TBR because it is going to be all middle grade. It is Believeathon next month, and Believeathon is a readathon that I created two years ago, and it is a month long readathon dedicated to reading middle grade and children's books. So, in order to participate in Believeathon, all you have to do is read children's books and middle grade. I do have an announcement video, which I will link down in the description box. It does feature a musical number. So, if you want to have your ears bleed just a little bit, because we all love that, then do check out that video. It was a rather fun video to film, so I I can imagine it is rather fun to watch at my expense. It is the very last full round of believe -a -thon that I will be hosting, so I need to go out with a bang. I need this TBR to be a really great TBR, mainly because last year during believe -a -thon 3, my TBR game kind of screwed me over and I didn't end up really getting to read the books that I was really excited for last November, and it kind of dampened believe -a for me. It wasn't really a very fun round, I mean for many reasons. So I am desperate to get all of the great middle grades in this video. Instead of the Bag of Dread for this one, I have my Bag of Loveliness. In my Bag of Loveliness, I actually have all of the believe -a prompts in, like the believe -a prompt cards, or at least the ones I didn't pick in my Patreon rounds, because I do need to talk about the rounds that I played live with my Patreon. Patrons. So in here is just the prompt cards for Believethon. So you know I will pick one out and then pick two books that will fit that prompt and play between them. So the stakes might not be that high in this video. However, one rule change that I will make in this month just to make the stakes that a little bit higher is that if I lose a round, then the book that I wanted to read, I am not allowed to read at all in November. So usually I can read it, but only if I've read the book that I've lost to first. So I'm taking out that rule in November. If I lose a round, I am not allowed to read the book that I wanted to read at all, even if I read the book that I lost to first. So that is the one rule change I will make in this month, just to make the stakes that little bit higher. And already I've been screwed over in the Patreon round, I'm not gonna lie. So I do have all of the information for believe -a -thon in the description box too, so do check it out, the announcement video, the Google Drive with all the free downloads, as well as the Twitter and the Instagram. But also I will be doing a 24 hour live show on the 1st of November for believe -a -thon. It's gonna start midnight to midnight on the very 1st of November in in UK time. But it doesn't matter where you are in the world, what time zone you are in, hopefully you can join me at least some part of that live show. I will be there all day. I also do have loads more live shows planned for the rest of the month, some themed live shows, and hopefully get lots of great guests in and all of that. So do keep an eye out on, well, on the social media platforms for one, but also do subscribe to my channel, hit the bell notification to be notified of all the future content and all of the future live shows that I will be doing for believe -a And also while you're at it, don't forget to like this video too if you enjoy. So enough chatter ch ch I guess, let's talk about the books that I have to read in November for reasons. So books that I am putting on my TBR without even playing the game yet, which always ends up amassing to a little bit too much. I do have a few on, but it's not that bad. <laughs> Firstly, I need to read Winter House by Ben Goodison. This one is the November book of the month for Middle Grade Monthly. I'm planning a kind of festive, wintry live show with Jade to read this book. It's not gonna be a reading race. We are just gonna have fun. We are gonna enjoy our time reading this with all the wintry elements to it. This book follows orphan Elizabeth, who is sent to live at this winter house hotel by her kind of cruel aunt and uncle. While there she discovers that Winter House has this massive library and she discovers this magical book of puzzles and these puzzles kind of unlock some mysteries to do with Winter House. I have read this before, I read it for Paula Thorne back in 2020. I am due a reread because I want to read the rest of the series and my mind is a little bit foggy, I can't remember a lot of what happened in this but I do remember I enjoyed it, I gave it four stars when I first read it but also I'm gonna do a sort of low-key Winter House 
along. I know I failed with Frost Heart along. Things just got too much for me. Too many things were happening at once. We're going to have a low key Winter House along. So if you want to join in, please do. We're going to be reading books one, two, and three in Winter House in November, December, and January. But this one's probably looking monthly. Books two and three are just going to be at our own kind of pace. So yeah, do check that out. And we will be doing the live show for this at the end of November, I believe, on my channel. For my From Book to Disney adaptation video series, I need to read uh, four books for it, maybe five, but I only have one of them at the minute. And one of them is The Adventures or The Merry Adventures of Robin Hood by Howard Pyle. I do know there is another Robin Hood book that might have inspired the Disney movie, and that was the one by Roger Lance Green, I think his name is. So I need to grab that one, read both of them to see if either of them inspired anything in the movie, the Robin Hood movie, the animated one by Disney. Then I need to read Winnie the Pooh by A.A. A. Milne, and I'll be watching all of the movies with my patrons. We do a Disney watch along every single month and have a live show every week. And then I also have ordered The Rescuers by, oh God, I really should have I should have researched this. Why am I shit? Okay, so Marguerite Shaw. Marjorie Shaw. I have that on order. It is on its way. And then finally, The Fox and the Hound by Daniel P. Mannix. I am going in era order of Disney animation. So we are going into the Bronze Age. And I'm doing the first four movies from that era. Fox and the Hound is actually going to be a little bit of a tricky one to get hold of. The physical copies of it are a little bit expensive. But there is a Kindle version of it. I think it's like £15. So that's going to be interesting. So I need to read those four books. Or potentially five if I get the other Robin Hood book. But yeah, I'm excited. I love doing that video series so much. I love looking at the original source material, watching the films and comparing them both, seeing what was different, what was the same. And it's just really fun. It takes an absolute age to edit, but you know what? It's, it's a fun process ish. <laughs> and it makes me feel smart. And then finally, the last three books that I need to like force my TBR are Children of the Quicksands by F.O.R. Traurie, Audie and the Blue Gods by Jasmine de Balan, and Dragon Rider by Cornelia Funke. And that's because I am chairing a panel for Waterstones at the end of November. I will put a little graphic up here where I am interviewing for authors for Waterstones. It is these three authors plus Ashling Fowler who wrote Fireborn, which I read earlier this year, so I don't need to reread it. But I do need to read these ones for it, so hopefully I can like squeeze them into the TBR. So that'll be really fun. I will leave a link to get tickets for that event. It's going to be really, really fun. I think it's like £5 for a normal ticket. Right, so let me tell you what happened with my patrons when we played Play Your TBR Right Live and the books that I have to read based on the results of that. So let's put the tally on the screen. I started off this month with six wins and three losses. So during my live with my patrons, I did, you know, pick out four reading challenges from the Bag of Loveliness, the believe -a -thon prompts. And the first believe -a -thon prompt I got was a brand new setting to explore, take the plunge, open the door, read an adventure. And that's really fitting because it's the very first believe -a -thon prompt in the video. It's number one and I just think that's just beautiful. So the books we picked for this prompt were Eva Evergreen, Semi-Magical Witch by Julie Abe. This is Percy Jackson and the Titan's Curse by Rick Riordan. So this was the one that I wanted to win, this is the one I didn't want to win, and we won. So I am going to be reading Eva Evergreen, Semi-Magical Witch. I do want to try and do a magical weekend reading this one and the second one at some point during the month of November, so keep an eye out for that. So this one follows Eva and she is semi-magical. She always seems to fall asleep whenever she does some kind of like magic and she really wants to be more powerful. She ends up at this town where she sets up like this repair shop and she is trying to prove herself as a more powerful witch. This has given me major Kiki's Delivery Service vibes and I really do hope it follows through on that because I am just genuinely so excited to read this book. It is highly anticipated. Yeah, I'm just so glad we won this round. <laughs> and then the next card I pulled out of the bag was, haven't I seen you before? You look rather familiar. How alike we both sound. It's like looking in a mirror. Read a book that was adapted. Now, I'm so glad this prompt also came up because I really wanted to read Night Books by J.A. White. I've seen the Netflix movie twice now and I really enjoy the Netflix movie. Kristen Ritter is an actual goddess and such a fantastic actress. I love her so much. So I really want to read this book and see what it's like. And we also, for the first time in Play Your TBR Right History, I decided in the very same game to try the same book that I lost to in the previous one. So Percy Jackson, The Titan's Curse by Rick Riordan. But we actually ended up winning and now I am reading Night Books by J.A. White. Honestly, I'm so happy about that. In already my TBR for November is looking so much better than last November. Honestly, so excited for this round, believe it or not, you cannot imagine. But Night Books, I don't know if the book is exactly the same as the film, which is why it'll be really interesting to read, but the film anyway was about this boy who loves writing scary stories, but he wants to throw away his Night Books, and he ends up stumbling into this apartment that belongs to a witch, and this witch kind of kidnaps him and forces him to write a new story for her every night, so that he reads her a horror story before bed almost 
Dolls kind of thing. It's a weird film, but I genuinely love it. It's so entertaining. So I do hope that the book is kind of similar to the movie at least. And yeah, I'm just really excited to read it. The third prompt I pulled out the bag was, do not forget of your current obligations. When the series is over, you can start celebrations. Continue a series you're already reading. Now I really wanted to read A Clock of Stars Beyond the Mountains by Francesca Gibbons. This is the second book in the Clock of Stars series. And it's also illustrated by Chris Riddell, so you know it's good. And then, <laughs> again, I tried the Percy Jackson and the Titan's Curse by Rick Ryden. Just to say, like, how many times do we have to put it in for it to win eventually? Well, it turns out we did lose, so I am reading Percy Jackson and the Titan's Curse by Rick Ryden in November. I really wanted to read this because I'm meeting the author in November, and with the new rule where I can't read the books when I lose them, so I'm just gonna have to roll with it, see what happens. But yeah, I was really excited to read it, but never mind. Never mind. Out of all of them so far, like this one would have been the one that I needed to win the most. So no wonder we lost at this round. But yeah, Percy Jackson the Titans Curse, third book in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. And I feel like everybody knows what the series is about. So I'm not mentioning what it is about, but I'm really excited because I never got round to reading this one. I only ever read the first two. So it'll be interesting. It'll be very interesting. And then the last round we played was for the Patreon book club. Usually we do a middle grade book club and a YA and adult book club every month. But this month, because it's Believe It, on. We're just going to do the middle grade book club, but we're going to pick two books for it. So the prompt that we pulled out for the Patreon book club round is... Fly high in the sky in the clouds you will soar to worlds unimagined and lands unexplored. Read a book set in a faraway place. Which is fabulous because that's very broad. So the two books that we wanted to win in this round was The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making by Catherine M. Valente and Crawfall by Vashley Hardy. And then on the side where we kind of didn't want to win, I mean, some of us did want it to win. It was the losing side, this one. And this was Ink Heart by Cornelia Funke, which you guys have probably seen on a TBR video many a time and Charmed Life by Diana Wynne-Jones. So it was these two versus these two, and we won. We actually won, and this counts as two wins, okay? This counts as two wins. So I'm really excited to read these. I've never read this one before, but I've seen such good reviews about it, honestly. Like, the name of it sounds fantastic. The girl who circumnavigated Fairyland in a ship of her own making. Ah, oh, like, it's a long title, but it's a bloody good one. This one follows September, who is kind of lonely, and this green wind kind of comes along and invites her to Fairyland. Fairyland is in danger by this evil, villainous Marquess, and there is a book-loving dragon, there is also a mysterious boy named Saturday. It just sounds so fantastical and amazing, so I can't wait to read it with my patrons. And also, reading Crawfall by Vashti Hardy, and yeah, this is a reread for me. I really enjoyed this book when I read it a few months ago, and it essentially follows Orin, who lives on the island of Crawfall, and Crawfall is, you know, in danger of falling apart. So Aaron accidentally ends up going on this adventure to save his island. That's like the very bare minimum of this book, but I don't want to spoil anything that happens because things do happen quite early on. That's kind of a bit of a twist, but it's just so good. It is really, really good. So I can't wait to talk about this one with my patrons as well, because there's just so many great things to say about this book. So yeah, I'm excited about that one too. So let's have a drink of courage and play, play your TV, all right. So we are now at 10 wins and 4 losses, so that's actually really good. We are in very, very good stead to not have to play the Punishment Pyramid. I've really missed playing the Punishment Pyramid. I haven't played it in a year, and I, I miss it. I want to lose, but I kind of don't. Anyway, let's go and pick off this prompt from the Bag of Loveliness. And I didn't mention this in the announcement video, but you can take out any cards that will not apply to you. If there are any cards you do not like, or any cards that you would not like to read for, just take them out. If you don't like contemporary books, take out the contemporary card. If you don't like scary books, take the scary book card out. This is just totally up to you, and you can absolutely do that if you want. I forgot to mention that in the announcement video, so I do apologise. Anyway, let me pick my first prompt that I will be trying to read from. It's hard in here as well because all the cards are like clumped together. Uh, so, oh, <laughs> this is so weird. I literally just mentioned this. Okay, flash of lightning, a terror once told, a scream in the night makes your blood run cold. Read a scary book. <laughs> it's so funny that this one came out when I literally just mentioned it. And in fact, I do love me some scary books, so it's fine. I'm just trying to think, like, what would be a good scary middle grade book? There are a few, 
the R A C U. Goosebumps? <laughs> no. But for the scary book prompt, I have picked The Collector by K R Alexander. And this one follows Josie, who goes to live with her grandmother, and her grandmother gives her three rules. She says, never leave your windows open after dark, no dolls in the house, and never ever go by the house in the woods. Josie meets a girl called Vanessa, and Vanessa invites her to go to the house in the woods. And I don't know what happens after that, if she goes to the house in the woods, what happens? I don't know. But we do have a creepy doll on the cover, so I kind of am really, really interested in this one. Okay, and then the one I don't want to read as much is The Dead World of Lanthorn Ghouls, because this one has been on my TBR for like, over a year, I think. Maybe two years. I don't know, whenever this came out. And I got sent this from the publisher like two years ago. I'm so sorry. I am interested in it, of course. It was an unsolicited book. So all I know is that it is set in Lanthorn Ghouls. It's like a very dead kind of place. And a scared young boy stumbles into that world. And he ends up meeting another person his age who is also frightened. And are they carrying a baby? It looks spooky and it probably is fantastic. It is more chunkier than The Collector. So I wouldn't mind not losing in this round. These are the cards I play with my patrons and I've kept these out. There were two jokers in that pack, so I don't have any jokers in this round of Play TV, all right? I am very sad about that because jokers are my wild card cards. So yeah, let me start the first round. I mean, kind of a little bit compact there, I do apologize. So the first card we are playing with is it's the highest and the lowest card, it's an ace, yay! Okay, brilliant. Uh, right, so higher or lower than an ace, and if you are playing along at home, higher or lower? Higher or lower? I mean, you can't go wrong with this one. I'm just gonna say it's the highest card and I'm gonna say lower. So three! Oh my gosh, three! Three is perfect. Three is absolutely perfect. I am gonna say higher than a three. It has to be higher than a three, unless it's a two. But uh, I'm gonna say odds are in my favour, higher than a three. Higher than a three it is. A king! Oh my god, it's the highest! What is going on? You know what? Um, I'm not fixing it, but I will see at the end of this round, whatever, but yeah. Oh my god, oh my god, king, king, highest card, highest card, highest card. Okay, um, so I'm gonna say lower, lower than a king. Lower than a king. Oh my gosh, it's really hard to grab these without knocking them all over. Two! Oh my lord! How have I got, like, high, low, high, oh wow. Okay, that is... Perfect, absolutely perfect. Two, you cannot get better than that. Cannot get better than that. So I want to say higher than a two. Cannot lose this round. Higher than a two, it is a six. That was just perfection. Absolute perfection. Look at, look at that. Look at that. Honestly, high, well, I said that was high. So high, low, high, low, high. So that means I get to read The Collector by K.R. Alexander for Believeathon for the Scary Book prompt. And that means I have to put those cards out. They're out of action. Okay, the next Believeathon prompt I will be picking is... Oh god, yeah, they are stuck together. Oh, I really should have, like, I don't know, printed them off better, I guess. Oh my god, get off. Get off. Oh my god, they won't separate. They, I'm gonna end up pulling two out here. No, stop it. Okay, got it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Died. Well, it's fine. On and on, the story goes. Read a quick or decompose. Read a long book. Okay, here is a compendium which you can buy off Amazon. You can also download the free copy of it. I do have a link in the description. But I'm kind of already forgetting what I said counted as a long book. I couldn't remember if it was over 250 pages or over 300. Oh, a book over 250 pages. Excellent. Excellent. Let me just double check the announcement video because I think... I might have told L.D. Lipinski, who read that prompt out loud, a different total. Let me just check. Right, okay, so we've already noticed a little bit of a typo in the compendium. So we're gonna have to like maybe change a couple of things. So in the announcement video, L.D. Lipinski was the author who read out this prompt and I sent them the script to see out loud, the prompt thing, and um, I told them read a book over 300 pages for read a long book, but in the compendium and everywhere else, it's 250 pages. So, <laughs> I'm glad this came up so I can clarify it in this video. If you get this prompt, you can pick, if you want it to be over 250 pages, if you want it to be over 300 pages, 
do what you want. It's fine. It doesn't have to be over 300 pages if you don't want it to be. But I'm going to pick a book that's over 300 pages because I'm just silly like that. I'm so silly like that. I'm so sorry. I thought everything was flawless, but I just remembered that it was not. So a book over 300 pages. Let's check. I really want to read this book that came. Is it over 300? Yes. Okay, this is nearly 400 pages, but a book I really, really want to read, I only got it the other day, a publisher kindly sent me it, is Explorers at Pirate Island by Alex Bell. I am so excited to read this book. It has skeletons. It has spooky, scary skeletons, zombie skeletons, and a dinosaur graveyard. And it is in the like whole like polar bear explorers club world. I think this is like a sequel to the Ocean Squid Explorers, which follows Ursula, and she was a great main character. But this looks so exciting. I love anything piratey. It's brand new too. It comes out on like the 4th of November, I believe. So oh, this would be perfect. Absolutely perfect. Another book that I would like to read eventually, but not really right now. I kind of want to read it with the sequel. And this is over 300 pages. It is Sky Pirates, Echo, Quickthorn, and The Great Beyond by Alex English. So this one follows Echo, who lives in the kingdom of Lockford. And she's told nothing exists outside of this kingdom. It's a little like divergent-like, I think. But then this professor crashes his airship into like the side of her house, I believe. The professor and Echo end up going on this incredible adventure. It does sound fantastic, I do want to read it, but I want to read this one like so badly. So let's play the second round and let's hope that this round goes just as amazingly as the first round did, although I'm starting to run out of cards and that might be a bad sign. That might be a bad sign. So let's play this next round. The first card is a seven. Ah, that's a terrible start, an absolutely terrible start to the round. I want to swap that because I hate, hate, hate. Sevens in this game. Love seven as a number, not in this game. Not in my game. So swap the seven for an eight. Shit. <laughs> That's not even any better. Okay, let's let's work this out. So eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king. So there's only five that's higher. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and then six more. Oh, that's even worse than seven. It's actually even worse than seven. Oh, damn it. I really want to read Explorers of Pirate Island so bad. Uh, right, okay. Higher low than an eight. Higher low than an eight. I feel like we've had quite a few low cards, just when I'm thinking of back in my Patreon rounds as well. I think there were quite a few low cards. So there might be more chance of it being a higher card. Oh, I'm going to say higher. I'm going to say higher. Higher than an eight it is. A king! Oh my god, phew! Oh my god, phew. Phew. See, that was me working it out. That was me working it out based on the cards that I've already used. Perfection. Okay, king. Highest card. So I'm going to say lower. Lower than a king. Lower than a king it is. A queen! Oh my gosh, that's so close. That is so close. Oh gosh, it's not as straightforward as the last round. It is not as straightforward as the last round. So, queen. I'm gonna say lower than a queen. It has to be lower than a queen. It has to. It cannot be a king again. Surely. Um, lower, lower than a queen it is. Oh, a 10. Oh gosh, this is painful. This is actually painful. Look at look at those cards. They're so high. Ugh, it's not as nice as the last round. Oh gosh. Okay, I wanna say lower, but there's another part of me that's thinking it's gonna be another like face card. Could end up being a jack. Or a queen again. Oh. Uh, and if you hear the wind, oh actually you won't be able to because I'll, I'll have attention music there. But the wind is so loud right now. Um, okay, I'm gonna say lower. Oh, I'm gonna say lower than a 10. Lower than a 10. Lower than a 10. Please, please, I really wanna read Explorers of Pirate Island. Please, lower than a 10. I do actually still have a life. I do have a life still actually. So I could potentially use it, but then I do have that rule where I can't use the life when it's the last card. That's almost cheating. Oh, I don't know. We'll, I'll use it if I lose. <laughs> anyway, I might not have to. So I'm going to say lower than 10 it is. Oh, two. Oh, yay. I don't have to cheat. Yay. <laughs> yay. Oh, my God. Phew. Phew. I get to read Explorers of Pirate Island. Oh, thank God. I, I honestly can't wait. Look at that cover as well. I love the cover of this one. It just looks so piratey and adventure-y. <sighs> oh. 
Now then, this could potentially be the last round because I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I do already have 15 books on my TBR, so I'm going to do one more round. Okay, now it's just blurry. Damn it. Come back. Come back. Oh, come on. Come on. Don't be blurry. Don't be blurry. I think we're back. Okay, brilliant. One more round. Let's do this. Let's make it a good one. I'll probably lose this round because, you know, something's got to give. But let's pick the last prompt. Oh, okay. Uh, interesting. So, a friend for life, though we really should split. It's time to dive in, if the time will permit. Read a TBR veteran. Okay, so a book that has been on my TBR for quite some time. I do have a little pile of books that I kind of really want to read, like, you know, as a sort of priority thing, none of them fit. <laughs> so let me see, what has been on my TBR for a long time? Okay, I feel like this one will be a good shout for it, The Girl of Incan Stars by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. This is like such a classic children's book now, even though it came out, I think, in 2017. But yeah, this one has been on my TBR for a while. This follows Isabella, who is forbidden to leave her island. Her best friend is a Pierre, she's determined to be part of the search party. Guided by an ancient map and her knowledge of the stars, Isabella navigates the island's dangerous forgotten territories. Sounds like a fantastic adventure, and I know like, this is like one of Kieran Millwood Hargrave's most famous and best books. So I need, I need to read that. And then on the losing side, okay, we have a doozy for you here. I have the final two books in the Series of Unfortunate Events series. Will I finally finish the Series of Unfortunate Events series after reading them for two and a half years? Will I? So yeah, I will pop these two on the losing side. They are small enough, so I don't mind reading both if I have to, but I would rather read Girl of Ink and Stars, of course. So let's play the final, final round. And literally I've seen the amount of cards I have left, tiny. Absolutely tiny. So yeah, um, I feel like I might end up losing this round to be honest. Like I can't win two and not suffer the consequences in the last game, surely. So let me, let me just uh, shuffle and begin the game. Right, the first card is a 10. It's a 10, okay. It is a 10. Uh, 10, uh, higher or lower than a 10. Higher or lower than a 10. I don't really want to swap. Don't need to swap, I don't think. I'll say lower, because I said lower in the last round and it was lower, although that could be a high card, to be fair. Is that someone knocking, or is it just the wind? Okay, anyway. Can you hear that? Anyway, um, lower. I'm gonna say lower than a 10. Eight. Ooh. Eight. Okay. Okay. Eight. What did I say before? It was worse than the sun card, isn't it? I want to say... Mm. Worse than... Yeah. Uh... Oh, I feel like I've got quite a few high cards in the last round. So I'm fancying my chances of saying lower. I might say lower. Lower than an eight. Lower than an eight it is. Oh, fuck. I do have a life. So I want to use the life. I want to use the life and, oh, stay in the game, but still it's a 10 again. It is a 10 again. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Higher or lower than a 10? Higher or lower than a 10? What do you think? Higher or lower than a 10? I uh, will say probably, I will say lower again, because there's more chance, but also, it could be anything at this point. Uh, yeah, I'll say lower. I will say lower than a 10. Lower than a 10, it is. Three! Oh my god, it's a three! <gasps> okay, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Okay, I'm gonna say higher. I will say higher than a three. It's gotta be higher than a three. I cannot lose this round. Interesting. I mean, I didn't want to jinx it, <laughs> but it does turn out that, you know, the last card was lower. Looks like I'm finally, after two and a half years, finishing the series of unfortunate events books. And at this point, honestly, I cannot care less about the series. I don't care about the characters. I haven't enjoyed these books in a while. It was fine. It's fine because my TBR is filled with books that I cannot wait to read. So let's have a little look at my TBR stack. I am sure I'm forgetting something. I'm sure I am forgetting 
something. And I do still have the three that I do not yet have, or four potentially. These are the books I'm reading for Believeathon. And honestly, I am like pretty much excited for all of them. I am pretty much excited for all of them. I am excited to finish the series of unfortunate events, to be fair. Yeah, these are going to be totally awesome. If you want to join my Patreon and join in on the Book Club Buddy Read for The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland and The Ship of Hero Making and Crowfall, then I do have a link to my Patreon down below. You can join as little as £3 per month. But, you know, that's totally optional. You don't have to. But it will be fun in the month of November to read some more middle bit with you guys and buddy read some stuff. So, yes, there's going to be loads more to do with Believeathon in the month of November. So don't forget to subscribe to stay updated with everything. Just hope you have an incredible Believeathon. Please do leave a comment down below if you're going to be partaking in Believeathon. What is your Believeathon TBR? What will you be reading? I'd love to know. But yeah, don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and hopefully I will see you in the next one. Bye!